guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we are working back with the Nemo Labs NBX 5040. As you can see right here, I have the original first cut spoil board, but the first thing that I wanna do before I start using this for real production is I wanna get a spoil board attached to this bed because if you don't do that, you can see right here when I did this cut, it was a 100% cut through. You're gonna cut into your original boards that come with the machine and you don't wanna do that because you don't wanna have to try to replace these. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Now, if you don't do 100% cut through and all you do is like engraving or something like this right here, like if you were just doing this type of cutting where it doesn't go all the way through, you really don't need a spoil board. It's not that important. All right, so what I did was I went to the big box store right here and I bought a piece of this MDF board. It's actually a piece of like chalkboard that's already coated for chalk on this side. I think I'm gonna use the white side because the tape will come off nice and clean on this. I think the black would look cool on this, but I think the white will do a better job with tape removal because I use the double-sided tape method to hold down. I'm not a really a big fan of those clamps because of what I do. I do 100% cut throughs more so than anything. And then what we're gonna do after that is I'm gonna design a grid on Lightburn that you can import into Easel. It's super awesome, super easy to do this process. When we home this machine in, every single time that you put your piece down on this board, that uh, it'll be in the same position every single time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this cut to size and get it installed, and then we'll head over to Lightburn and then Easel, and then we'll cut out the, uh, the grid. So, all right, here we go. Alright guys, now that we went ahead and got this MDF board attached to the machine, I used that double-sided tape. It doesn't take much, that stuff really, really bonds. Usually these last me probably about a month or two of cutting. Depends on how much you actually cut, how long your waste board is going to last you. So with that being said, let's go over to Lightburn and create that grid right now. Here we go. Alright guys, so now that we're in Lightburn, what we're going to do is we're going to create a grid that I'm going to engrave into that waste board about a half a millimeter. Come over here to the top left, we're gonna create a box and just put it anywhere, just something like that. Okay, so now that we have our box, come up to the top and we're gonna call it 50 millimeters wide and 50 millimeters tall. That way it's an even box all the way around. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the X, Y position in the zero position. So just come over here to the top, hit zero, and then zero again, and it's gonna drop it way down here in the bottom left of, you can see my workspace. So the workspace is 500 by 400. So we have a X axis of 500 and a Y axis of 400. Now this is gonna be our cutting area that is represented on the Nemo Labs machine. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to the array. So let's go ahead to array and we're gonna call it, let's go 10 columns on the X axis and we're gonna go eight on the Y axis. Just like that, pretty simple. So now you can see that I have a grid. The one thing I forgot to make sure to tell you about right here is the X spacing has to be zero. You want these to overlap. You don't want there to be any spaces in between. So a 50 
millimeter wide, 50 millimeter high, we're gonna do a X spacing of zero and an X space Y spacing of zero as well. Now it was already set, luckily, you would have noticed because these boxes would have been spaced out, but luckily I already had the spacing at zero. All right, so now you can see that I have these all spaced out, perfectly represented what the working area is on that machine. Let's go ahead to the top, let's go ahead to edit, uh, select all. And then we're going to come over here to arrange and group them all together. So now it is basically, you could see it's one unit all together, kind of welded together. All right, so come back over here and let's go to zero, zero. That just kind of shows us where we're at. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to put a little circle in the middle. Uh, that just kind of shows me the center point where it's at. So let's come over here to circle, and then we're just gonna make a circle like that, and then we can call it, oh, I don't know, 150, and then 150. That way it's a perfect circle, okay? And then come back to the top, edit, select all, and then what we're gonna do is center and center. So now we are centered on the piece. You can see the perfect center is right here. Again, come one more time to arrange, and then we're gonna group it all, and we should be all set. So now when I move this back to zero, everything should move at once. Just like that. But now we're good, so this is it. That is the only thing you need to do in Lightburn. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to File, and then we're gonna export this as an SVG file. You can see right here, SVG. So let's go ahead and name it Nemo Labs Grid. There we go. And then we'll hit save, and we're gonna do it right to the desktop. We'll hit save, and we're good. So now let's go ahead and close Lightburn. Let's go ahead and open up our easel program to get this cut. Here we are in easel, and we have a new project already open. So let's go ahead and change this work area. This doesn't matter right here. It says birch plywood. Let's just call it MDF, because that's what it is. We're gonna come over here, and the width is 500. That's our X, and then 400 for our height and we should be good to go. So now you can see right there, the only issue is that my cutting machine is not right under the settings. So let's go to my machine and let's go ahead to edit machine and the X axis is 500 and this is 400, there we go. And let's save. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and import our SVG file. There it is right there, Nemo Labs Grid. All right guys, now that we went ahead and got it imported into our program, what we wanna do is go to Edit, Select All, change this, we don't want any tabs, and we wanna cut this about a half a millimeter, so 0.5. We just wanna be really shallow. So if you come over here, okay, you could see it, this is what it's going to look like. It's just gonna have a very shallow groove cut grid inside that board. Pretty awesome, nothing crazy. We should be good to go. So let's go over to the CNC machine, home the machine. What that'll do is it'll bring it right to this far corner and it'll create this grid wherever it goes. All right, let's go ahead and do it. <laughs>
All right, guys, that is it. That is how I make my spoil boards whenever I'm doing my CNC machine spoil board. I just wanted to give you a little quick tutorial on how to do that, how to export it from Lightburn and then import it into Easel to create your spoil boards. You could do so many different things. I really was laughing on how I forgot to group these all together and it was doing the little X's all over the place. You could do it where there's only a couple X's. You can do it where there's just one box on the outside and then have, you know, a circle in the middle. There's so many different options or different ways that that you can create your own waste board pattern. But I just wanted to show you this. So now, real quick, as you can see, once I put my board in here, and anytime I tape it down, if I line it up across these lines, each and every time, this is gonna be the most, the furthest point that my end mill will go. The one thing I did mess up, is you could see all these little chip marks, I didn't realize that I actually put an upcut bit when I really should have had a downcut bit. A downcut bit would have prevented all these little chip marks. It is a waste board, it's not a big deal. And again, you don't have to do it as much as far as these little X's go or anything like that, or the boxes go. You don't have to do that many. You can do whatever you want. Uh, just create it in Lightburn and then import it into Easel or whatever your G-code sender is. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty simple project. I hope you like this video. If you do like the video, make sure you give it a like. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go down in the description, check out all the links that I have to this machine and other things as well, as well as hats that you can purchase uh, to help support the channel. All right guys, until that next video, make sure you all do one thing, stay awesome and we'll see you next time. Bye.